flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? How's, uh, how's the injury? Are you 100% now? Oh, 99. 99, that's great. Okay, uh, did you have a chance to take a look at the uh, uh, minutes from May the 24th? Oops. Anybody have any corrections, additions, or changes? No? Move to approve. Moved by Smith. The minutes seconded by Garrett. Those in favor? Okay. By zero. Okay. The uh, Board of Public Works and Safety minutes for uh, the 5th and the 19th are in your packets for information purposes. Uh, we have no uh, communications tonight, no public hearing, no old business, uh, new business. I'm going to slip right down to you, Monica. You're here regarding the fireworks, right? Yes, sir. Monica, do you want to give us your pitch tonight? I don't know what much much of a pitch there is. Um, as usual, I don't when when I start coordinating that I don't want to interfere with Akron. Akron's the town of Akron's birthday is on the fourth. Right. So we either do it the day before or the day after, depending on how it falls on the weekend. So this year it's on the third. Um, the same fireworks company that sets off the Rochester fireworks is the same company that sets off Akron's. So they can't be two places at once anyway. So the only trade, the only difference, the only thing that's different from before is, as everything else, they've raised the rates. So the rates for the fireworks went from 10,000 to 13,000 this year. I saw that. I saw that in the permit they were submitting. Uh, so first business, you're, you're going to have the fireworks. You're asking for the fireworks on the third. Right. Yes. It's Sunday the third. Yes. Anybody see any issues with that? Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> we normally budget. We have five thousand dollars. We budget for the fireworks. Mm -hmm. I know the situation you're in. I would like to suggest, to council folks, that I relinquish a thousand dollars from the mayor's promotional fund to supplement their situation. So you get six, that. six rooms. Will that help? That certainly would help, yes. Anybody have an issue with that? I'm not, you know, that fund, I don't, I don't normally deplete that. Um, and Sha, we've got it, right? Mm -hmm. Do we need to vote on that? Please, would you? We'll make a motion. Wilson makes the motion. Is that also including, excuse me, Tom, is that also is including the 5,000 plus your yes. thousand? be a total, total of six. Total of six. Yeah. Yes. I'll second. Those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And uh, get 100%, will you? Thanks. <laughs> the staples are gone now. Good. Very good. And before you move on, Mayor, just when you send us the email requesting, um, just change it from 5000 to 6000 Yes. And then when I have the girls, do you need that before the 4th? When do you normally pay them? I pay them the day after. The day after? Well, so in this case, I will probably be paying them on, I'll be paying them on like the 5th or the 6th. Okay, because if you can get me the, the letter requesting the funding for tomorrow, I can include it this in this week's claims. Otherwise, it'll be two weeks. I'll get it tomorrow. Okay, and just drop it off the front desk, and they'll care to get that process for you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Monica, refresh my memory. Where do they come from? Uh, Edwardsburg, Michigan. Wow. Okay. So they don't, they, you know, load up all their stuff and come down here either the day before or the day after, and then the next day they go to Akron or yeah. vice versa. So they don't make two trips from Edward sure. back and forth. Sure. Well, again, uh, thank you for your efforts on this. It's been great. You, you know, things have just gone great with the Legion taking that task over a couple of years. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, we've got a, a rainy day fund used uh, community crossing grant match that uh, shot up once. You know, we voted on this with our uh, originally, but she wants some clarification on the uh, ARPA funds. No. This isn't this the ARPA is fund. No. Uh -uh. Um, okay, where's the ARPA fund? That's down under the resolution. Oh, that's in the resolution. Yes. Okay, what, what is this? This is for our, we've got a, we were awarded a million dollar community right. crossings grant for Main Street stormwater. What I would like is, um, I need to document in the minutes, I would like to take the match, which will be 250000 out of our rainy day fund because it's a 2575. So rather than me trying to piecemeal multiple funds together to come up with that match, I'd like for the council to allow me to just take that match right out of rainy day, and we call it done, easy peasy. We're it's good in rainy day, though. Six and four. How much do we have? Well, I said we're good in it. Yeah, yes. that, that total amount would be nice. Yeah, 661000 right now, because I haven't transferred anything over to it just because we're of all the projects. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're yeah. good. Okay. Yeah. I know, right? So maybe if we use it, it'll rain. <laughs> probably 14 days ago or so that we're not allowed to uh, he's not allowed to currently park it at our resident we live on 1630 Bancroft um, I guess I was unaware we were unaware of this we've been doing it for a while and um, especially with the the cost of fuel right now he does not feel safe leaving it at the uh, truck stop which was requested and, and I understand that in a normal circumstance we don't have a problem with that I guess I would just like to know if there's any way we can revise it to maybe allow them to park at home for their 14 hour that they are required to have off every day for safe driving and then they also are required to have a 32 hour break over the weekends. Um, it would be nice if maybe with the, like I said, the cir circumstances right now with fuel being the cost that it is, people are trying to take it. I mean honestly um maybe they, they're, they're, they aren't securing the lot out there i mean i guess there's been a couple incidents from what i understand um i i can understand you, you can't catch everybody stuff's gonna happen it is what it is um i guess we were just asking for maybe a revision of some of the <coughs> requirements or guidelines regulations whatnot did you get a copy of the ordinance um no i didn't no, we had, I, so I can't, I can't think it. who with the officer was. Okay, do uh, that. That's your copy to keep it. From okay, me. awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and just for your, you guys' information, this, is, this ordinance has been on the books forever since I've been here. I don't know. I think it was codified in, seven, in the 70s. 73. So when we actually started. <clears throat> um, so it's always been there. Yeah. We've kind of overlooked it. Um, we've never really enforced it the past several years um, here within the last couple of months it was asked that we start enforcement so we are um, there have been you there are two on Fulton yeah I'm, I'm there there might there might be four Fulton. what happens you know unfortunately yeah it has been on the books a long time and it's been hit and miss as to the application of it we start getting complaints yeah and then you've got the law on the books and you're not and i understand yeah absolutely. you're not following through with the law absolutely uh and everyone that we've talked to and i, I think and i think we talked to your husband is it? it's my fiance yeah fiance. robert yesterday <clears throat> um we try to be as accommodating as we can the others have asked uh -huh. hey can i bring it home once a month to clean it up or wash it or something yeah and we're fine with that um but the problem is when, when we have to enforce it for one, we have to enforce it for everything. Yeah, I understand. Um, 
And please don't, you know, we're not trying to pick on Oh, you. no, no, no. No, uh, I, I, that's why I came up. We're not trying to, to create inconveniences because I know it can be a hardship. But, yes, yes. Um, I've included that, the ordinance in the back of your packet so you have it, you know, look over it and read it. And, and also so, one, yeah. one of the, the main reasons which I've called in a few times uh, to Chief Butler uh, because emergency vehicles and the fire trucks have to get down those narrow streets. Exactly. And the and larger the vehicle you put out there, the streets aren't very wide. Yeah. And uh, they, you, you've got to be able to get emergency vehicle. Yeah, and we, we have ours down. pulled off. It's off of the road in a concrete driveway back at least 20 feet off of the road. So it's not in the road or anything like that. I don't know if we could talk about maybe putting it so far off of a distance off of the road. You know? And your revisions would have to be up to the council. Okay, well, um, and I don't know what I need to do, or I guess this is just my first are step. You, I'm by no means. Are you a, saying you park it off the street? Yes, we park it off the street, about 20 feet. Does that, does that comply with? It's still driving a semi in a residential area. You're right. You have to get. And that's the way it's worded. And I think a lot of it was because of the wear and tear of the heavy trucks on the side streets. And I can understand that as well. I, mean, I, uh, I think that. that's where a lot of that probably came from, especially back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. um, whether you guys want to revisit it or not, it's up to you. Um, but yeah, they, they, I will say they, they park it off the street, but you're still driving it in, in a residential neighborhood. No, we keep and it clean. Specific to. Some of us drive on the city streets. We see them on 8th Street coming by our place all the time. Well, if they're making deliveries to and from, that's fine. Yeah. yeah that's pointed they out. Can, they can make deliveries to and from a business. Like, sem I mean, semis go down 18th Street all the time going to the Moose and. and yeah. Except on state highways or state controlled highways, it shall be unlawful for any person to operate a commercial vehicle with a gross weight in excess of 10,000 pounds in any residential district, provided, however, that this prohibition shall not apply to such a vehicle when it is making a delivery from a state or state-controlled highway and returning to it by the most <coughs> direct route possible. And in the event that this restriction results in any undue hardship or unfair competition, the chief of police shall have the power to authorize the issuance of special permits from time to time as deemed necessary for the protection of the rights of any individual. Passed November 27, 1973. So, Attorney Perkins, does that mean that the chief could issue a permit to allow this particular situation to park in their, on their own property? I don't think, in my opinion, inconvenience isn't uh, an, a hardship. I think what, what I heard, and I, I'm, what I heard was if it were a situation of uh, unfair competition, like, like you had, uh, you had one, uh, uh, one that was, had to be moved, and you had a competitor across the street if this were a heavy delivery truck or something, he had to park his. And that might be a situation. I think you'd have to fit it under one of those I think that, it sounds like that's where that's what that's intended for. Okay. I know one of the uh, one of the instances, and I don't believe it's yours that was brought yeah. to us, had to do with uh, visibility on the street. You know, pulling out from another. Oh street. yeah. Yeah. Um, takes up a lot of room. Yeah, I agree. I agree, and that's why you know I said we wouldn't park it if we didn't have the. The means to put it 20, 30 feet off of the road, so it's not in traffic. You know, anybody can get through. We are the first, second house off of 18th Street on Bancroft, so it's not that we're, you know, far. I know you can't make special. You can make arguments both ways. I agree. I agree. Because they make the roads better than they did in the 70s, probably. Yeah, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not asking for trouble. I just. No, no, I, you're doing the right thing by coming and okay. talking to them. Absolutely. Okay. You're Annabelle? Yes, sir. You presented your position very eloquently. Thank you, sir. Well, you've done a nice nice job. Thank today. you. I don't know that we can do you a lot of good, but uh, okay. you've, you've done a nice job presenting your situation. 
Thank you very much. Any, I appreciate the time. Is there any chance that property borders a, a, a district that's not a residential district? Um, our property act, a residential district? Um, actually, our property butts up to um, the water station right there on Bancroft by the swamp on the back side of Columbia. The only, yeah, 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 the only other thought I had was uh, <clears throat> if you could maybe they could go to the planning commission and ask uh, uh, that it be rezoned in, into the neighboring district and then then it wouldn't apply because it's not a resident. I don't know if they do that, but. Uh, I don't know, it's, I mean, it's residential all the way around. Okay. okay. Yeah. You know, on 18th Street. Yeah, I think it would only work if it would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. But yeah. The only other, the only thought I had too was if there was a property available that all of you guys could go together and purchase that you could secure yeah for I mean if, if you all know each other exactly since like Andy said there's four five in town yeah or something that you guys could and then you guys could secure it that would you know one location everybody parks we'll see I mean, we're a lot I'm sorry yeah no the um a lot of them were using the McDonald's you mm -hmm. know and and, and I get that. That was nice because we knew it was a lot of the local guys and whatnot. We're having a lot of out-of-towners, where you do with the pilot. Mm -hmm. And then they got the new owners and they said that they wouldn't allow that anymore. So now they've all moved on to the pilot, which I understand mm -hmm. also. But it just kind of put them all in a tough spot. It's, sometimes it's hard to get in there. A lot of the trucks are parked for the night at 6, 7 o'clock at night. Um, my fiancé, he works usually leaves on a Sunday in the evening and he'll be home Friday evening. So he's only home his 36 hours or whatnot, 36 to 48 hours. So it just happened to be right time of day, day I guess somebody saw it. So it is what it is. I just wanted to state our concerns in our case. Is there anything Thank you, but I think that's probably about all we can do at this time. Is there anything with the planning commission you guys can discuss for it? Yeah, we might might be able to. I think Since you guys are to, to, the county. Right. <clears throat> probably requested to be changed because it seems like it, I don't know, you know, if you're off the street, I don't see why it's such a big deal if you're totally off the street. I mean, I remember over on 10th Street growing up, somebody was a truck driver, was paying the ass in the wintertime, and we were... That's a lot of it. It's Those of you in TV morning. land, that's oh, a technical sorry. term. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I am getting woke up in the wintertime. <laughs> Well, from the truck, truck driving, well, you know, because the truck can't shut off. It's That's a huge ordeal. Yeah. In and, and I get that. I get that. And those are complaints that we've had in the past where in the wintertime they leave their truck running because it's too cold and bother the neighbors right. right next door to the truck. Which that I understand as well. It's just like a barking dog or something. I mean, I got those too. Not mine though. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> What do I do about that? <laughs> really? We'll put you on the agenda again. <laughs> take care of those two. Yeah. Uh, Get on the agenda for that. <laughs> okay. Well, well, thank you. I appreciate yeah. your time and listening to me. Well, again, we get a lot of people to make presentations. You've done a nice job. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time again. Thanks. Okay, uh, that takes us down to the ordinance resolutions. Uh, we're looking at resolution, and this is the one I was thinking about, 07-2022, addendum for ordinance 07-2021, uh, mm -hmm. the ARPA, the ARP fund spending plan. Shada, would you like to bring us up to speed on that? Uh, yes. If you recall of the multiple conversations we had about ARPA funds, that we established the fund, we established all the requirements we needed to. The only thing we didn't do was actually put our spending plan in a formal resolution or ordinance, which is required before I can actually disperse any money. So uh, What we guys, did was pretty informal. Yeah, I mean, it was approved at the council. I have it documented in the minutes. You guys approved what we were going to spend it on, but per the Treasury's guidelines, we have to have it more formalized. So all I did was, I, 
I apologize, I did not run it past you, uh, but I typed up the resolution referencing back to the f our ordinance that we created the fund, the ARP fund, and just documented that you guys approved the 50,000 for the health department, that you approved up to 300,000 for the water department for the water main extensions, and then the remaining was going towards our stormwater project. So that was just how I worded it, what has already been discussed and approved, it was all going towards utilities um, to save on having to jump through any additional hoops or it was pretty simple and cut and dry. So I just put it in a resolution um, and then that'll make the feds happy and <laughs> it'll make uh, our financial advisors happy as well. So that's it in a nutshell. Yes, Yes, because it's actually a resolution, so, yeah. Uh, <coughs> could I have a motion for the first, for the reading of resolution 07-2022? Okay. Thank you. So moved. moved by Smith, seconded by Wilson, those in favor for the reading of the resolution. Okay. Um, Marty, do you have the resolution? Did I say in, in its entirety? <laughs> Do you have a oh, you so you want to I think I said in title only, Marty. Oh, I, I think I heard that. Yeah, I, 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 I thought I did. It doesn't matter yeah. to me. I that's, don't care. That's okay in title only? Everybody. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, you, you, if you recall, you really don't have to read the resolution. You just vote on it. Ordinance that you have to read, correct, no. Attorney Perkins? Resolution that we'll read once. You don't have to read it all. You can just we reference it by number and motion pass if you want. Would it be nice for the public to know what what, what we're doing? Five thousand feet, you know? Okay. Go ahead, Marty. What am I doing? <laughs> well <laughs> I think we had a motion title. to read the resolution by title only. Okay. A resolution adding an addendum to ordinance 07-2021. ARP Fiscal Recovery Fund Uses Plan. A motion to approve resolution 7 2022. Moved by Wilson. John raised his John seconded. Those in favor? Okay. Resolution passes. Thank you. Uh, we have several of our uh, chiefs and uh, Superintendents out on duties tonight. Um, is Marcus back here? In the dark? Uh, nope. no. no, I'm the only one that didn't get the memo. He's <laughs> 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 Well, we always He's like to, to do that, Andy. We always like to have you here because you're the one that has a gun. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, so Fire Chief Butler is, is uh, he's he has a day off today. Uh, Chief Shots, would you like to give us your report? Certainly. For the month of May, <coughs> there were 27 accidents. We issued 113 total warnings. 59 of those were for city ordinance. Um, 60 total offenses, 51 case reports, 687 calls for service, 32 lockouts, 5 to vehicles, 33 people incarcerated. And then you have the crimes that those people were lodged for. Um, other than that, <clears throat> Brady Briggs is still at the academy. He'll graduate, I believe, uh, August 19th. And then Bryce Michael, our newest hire, will go to the academy on August 29th. So we'll, we'll be getting one back, we'll be losing one. Fairly short order there. Um, we're still trying to hire one to replace one of them that one, if you remember, we lost two. Logan's Fort, we hired Bryce. We're still trying to hire one. We had the process. We couldn't get anyone. Um, so we're, we're going through another hiring process. Applications were due, I think, last Friday, or week ago Friday. We're going to have applicant testing on July 9th. So we'll see how that goes. We've got six people that turned in applications. So we'll see how it goes. Other than that, that's about all I have, unless you guys have any questions. Any questions for the Chief? Thanks for being here tonight, Andy. Yeah, anytime. Okay, uh, Dwayne 
is, is tied up in some things too, so he could not be here, but I uh, want to give you a quick update. Uh, those of you who've been in the project room know we have about 16 projects on the whiteboard, and either Dwayne, Marcus, or Derek are actively involved in somewhere in those projects. See, Marvin Davis is here tonight from the uh, water board, right, Marvin? You're back there in the shadows? Yeah. Uh, got a project starting there uh, very, very shortly to uh, loop the water main out uh, the Deer Run addition east of Vesper Park Road. Uh, and that's something that's been needed for some time. We're going to use some of the ARPA funds to complete that. Um, that project was bid, and uh, TGB out of Mishawaka was a successful bidder last, this last week. So things will be moving on that pretty quickly. Uh, we've started the uh, Minnow Creek revamping project on the uh, uh, east side of town uh, through the city limits. And through those huge pipes have already started to be used in culvert areas that we needed to replace piping, do some dredging, getting Minnow Creek in order. Uh, did you see those pipes out there along by the fairgrounds of Route? Those things are bigger than this room. Two of them are already in place. Our folks working in combination with the county, their street department in the county, uh, and whipping it out like crazy. Uh, Sixth Street, oh, we just finished, and the street's back open. Third Street is just finished, and they'll have one more at uh, Riddle School that they will be putting in place here very shortly. They're moving along, doing, doing some good stuff. Uh, our engineering firm is moving ahead uh, uh, expeditiously with the downtown project, community crossing project, where we're revamping uh, storm sewers and uh, repaving Main Street. It will be all the way from Monticello Road up to 8th Street when it's completed. And it'll all look then like uh, the NDOT paving project that was done this last year with the 14 and 31, old 31 or Main Street going uh, going south. So that that's in the works. Uh, should be ready to uh, bid the first phase of that, which is Sixth Street to Monticello Road, within a few couple of weeks. So we'll be hearing more about that as we progress. We want to do it in phases for a couple of reasons. We've got the million dollar grant for the, for the first phase, and the community crossing folks we believe would certainly be interested in our applying for. The thing for the second grade as well. So that was the reason for breaking it up into two chunks. One thing, the other thing was uh, you don't do something like that just overnight. We don't want to disrupt the whole downtown when we're looking at chili uh, cook off and not the over car show. You know, we want them to be able to come and stop at 6th Street. So, and that's all been planned out with the folks, uh, the car club chambers. We're all, we're all in sync there. Uh, there will be some uh, detours and such traffic through that process and Chief Shots and Chief Butler are actively involved working with our engineering firm folks and the, and the contractors that, that would be picked to make sure we do that without too much difficulty. Um, the waste treatment project to Marcus's project where we're upgrading the waste treatment plant to the tune of uh, seven and a half million dollars the SRF loan. That's coming along fine. Uh, the Gantt chart we had that we work off of, we have that project broken into nine categories of, of uh, upgrade and repair and everything's uh, put on a schedule and uh, calendar wise. We meet once a month with the Crosby construction folks and the Commonwealth folks and uh, go over that schedule and make sure any bottlenecks we're working through together so everybody's on the same page. And as you might imagine, some of the bottlenecks have been materials. Uh, it's kind of a crazy world right now, but we are at this point, we're in pretty decent shape and we're moving, moving forward with that. Of the nine categories, 
Uh, five of them have been completed. We've got four others to wrap up and look to have that all wrapped up. The goal is in November to have that finished, and then we will have a waste treatment plant that is upgraded and running for a very long time. Well, the scope of all that change, I mean, part of having material shortage is also increased cost of material. Yeah. Are we going to see some diminished scope of the whiteboard? Part of sitting down and having these construction meetings, uh, you know, I came from the world of management by objective and uh, working under the principles of folks like <clears throat> Ellie Goldratt, who uh, was the father of uh, projects and constraints, you know, called the Herbies, and we run into a lot of that. And part of our meetings are we lay the, the Herbies out in front of everybody and work through how we can mitigate any additional costs, and maybe redirect how we how we finish the project. And uh, we've done we've done quite a little bit of that. So. Uh, the cost, the additional cost, we try to keep that at a minimum because, at, you know, the state revolving fund folks they only want to loan the money once, so we try to work that out. And in some of the uh, things that we change or we uh, take a look at taking a different direction, will actually bring a credit then back to us because we're not doing this, but we're doing this, which is going to be perfectly okay. So yeah, it's uh, these are not average times, and if you go about it like this, uh, you're not going to be able to do these things, and you're going to end up spending a whole bunch of money. And and we push back. I mean, there are people involved at times that, well, let's just say it, uh, they're trying to take advantage of the situation, and we push back. So anyway, that's that's where we are with uh, some of the major projects going on. So when you see these guys out doing this or doing that, or they're not uh, oh, well, the car show folks. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Apologize, that, Mr. Mayor. That's all right. Uh, when you see these guys out doing whatever, they're they're pretty busy right now. Uh, of course, there's a couple of things that you have seen that we haven't talked about for some time. Is this flash pad? now in operation and that's that's why that's crazy it's being utilized at the nth degree and uh, it has turned out to be a really good thing uh, there have been some bugs with it uh, it is highly computerized and uh, you know sometimes an on off switch is better than all of the computerization because <laughs> okay so we're, we've had a couple of bugs that we've had to work out with the, uh, the manufacturer installer, of it. but that's that's going really well. Uh, the uh, the new pool management is doing very well. Uh, my gosh, shot of how many people have gone through the pool to date? It's a bunch. I I don't honestly know the number off the top of my head. I know any all the days that have been above eighty degrees and sunny. I think they've been maxed as they've met their 300 and Marvin. Well, you were in one of those conversations, 310? I, I think it's 310 or 312. 312, that's yeah. what, 310 or 312 is the max, we, just because of lifeguard and safety, but every day that's been nice, I think we have maxed our purchase. A couple of those hot days, and this, these, you know, Ethan Trottiger, Megan McLaughlin, they're doing a great job in managing them. Cool. Uh, a couple of these hot days, uh, I've driven up there to see how things are going. There'd be people lined up outside in line, and our folks would be giving out water and whatever while they're waiting. And I want this, oh my gosh, we got a problem. What's going on? No. With the lifeguards on duty, there's only X amount of people you can have in at one time, right? You can't, uh, you can't pull everybody in there and just let them go. And our management was being very, very conscientious about that. And I walked up and I said to one of the dads, I said, T, I'm sorry, you got to wait. I said, I know this is a... And he said, no, thank you for having people who are that conscientious. 
We appreciate that. So uh, there's a lot of good things going on there, and uh, we'll just keep on keeping on. And I hope Ethan comes back uh, next year. I think he's planning on it, but we'll see. I heard different. No, and Megan too. I haven't heard anything different. So we we got uh, the lifeguards all matching bathing suits this year. It says lifeguard across it, and they look very professional. The two pool managers have shirts say pool pool management. So that nobody has any question when they walk in there, who's in charge? Okay. Okay, that's very quickly some of the things going on. I mean, the other projects are at different stages. Uh, the salt barn, where uh, we've got uh, bids out for it right now, it's going to be built by the time one gets around here. Uh, we've got a meeting uh, Thursday with the Republic Landfill folks to talk about uh, the leachate business that we've been handling and uh, the transmission line that we've talked about for some time and put some ideas in place and they want to, I think they want to get into that transmission line world as quickly as they can because that's, that's money for them. And of course they would pay for all of that. So we'll be having discussions with them Thursday. So anyway, we got a, we got a busy schedule, a lot of things on the plate, but a lot of things are getting done. I, I, Keep telling the folks I keep wanting to go in and take more off of that board as we go, but there always seems to be something to add at the bottom. So, any questions? Okay, all right. Thank you. Okay, reports of committees. Uh, we don't have Harry here tonight. We don't have David Heidi here tonight. Ruth, how about the Area Plan Commission? Anything to report? Well, we work on a vote on um, changing the, is it the houses out there that Doc Hoff is building. He, he's ready to show some of them. And he'd like to, instead of having them apartments, having them, uh, or duplexes, he wants to sell them as a condo kind of thing. So he needs to have that change to allow ground and property sold. Oh, there, I see. And there yeah. wasn't enough people there to vote. So we're doing a special meeting tomorrow night so we can vote maybe, to say, yeah, you maybe, can sell them that way. Maybe you don't, maybe you don't know this, but I mean, I've, I've seen those things. And they look like duplexes. Yeah, they They're do. Two, two together. Uh, so he's wanting to break that up so that. Yeah, the land. Okay. Right now he's selling just the, just the building, but the land needs to go with it too. Okay. I see. Right, so so you've got to have that worded differently, I, okay. and then we have to approve the wording of it. Okay. So, um, so yeah, the, and there wasn't a quorum last night. Somebody said they were going to show up and didn't. You know, I could have done that to you. I know you could have, <laughs> but you see, I, you know, now I've gotten in the habit of calling. You know? <laughs> so, so we have to have a special meeting. Other than that, they are done with uh, the. Um, plan, the, the is it city plan, that's all done, she's ready to type it up, and we talked about that a little bit. And Boy, they're looking nice. Yeah, 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 it's very nice, and she wanted to explain some blank spots so that in the future those blank spots don't mean anything except for if something comes up, there's somewhere to put some more stuff in because it's always changing. And. Uh, the last appendix, she says, I'm going to leave that blank just in case. Is that okay? So, yeah, so she's. Heather, very you good. the draft to me today yeah. to forward to the council. So yeah. you all will have uh, have an opportunity to review it before the public hearing starts. So she just emailed it to me today. And, and she says she's not going to read it to it again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now she doesn't mind revamping it and adding things. <clears throat> You know, the whole thing again, never. It took a little too long, you know. Did you tell her you write that up in pencil? You know? Yeah. Well, well, COVID happened in the middle yeah. of that. So yeah. it did sure. extend it and make it a little more difficult yeah. than uh, than what would have normally happened. So, you know, all in all, those guys have done great. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Appreciate your, your um, Yeah, yeah. Because we've talked about a lot of different things that they've changed and everything that people have come in and on a regular basis say, do I really need to do that? And and so there's been a lot of rewording to make it easier for people to do things. Um, 
in the area. So that that's nice. It's an interesting meeting, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It is. Any questions for group? Okay. Uh, Fitco, uh, Goodman's not here. I know they have completed their uh, survey. <clears throat> the consultant that they hired to go do a community survey and such. I'm not sure when the results of that will be let out, but I know that is completed. Uh, Redevelopment Commission uh, meets tomorrow, and uh, on the, uh, the agenda is the uh, working through the completion of the Nickel Plate Trail. And mm -hmm. the, the uh, USI vote uh, will be here tomorrow. I can't wait to hear that. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're going to have their stuff together to show everybody in the, the group. They were really kind of promising. They're, uh, you know, what, what you find out if you've been in this job for a while, is everybody's out there that says engineering firm isn't necessarily who you need for your particular job. They all right. have their forte. Right, and, right. And the USI folks are, you know, roads and mm -hmm. bridges and trails and stuff. They're not waste treatment plants, you know, right. that kind of thing. And uh, they, do a, they do a good job. And I think, uh, yeah, they've given me a little bit of an insight as to what they're bringing in. You're going to be pleased with it yeah. tomorrow. Um, then I understand there's a conference call with the DNR tomorrow. Good, yeah. good. Because because the thing is is to attach the nickel plate to the existing trail around the hospital, and, and the, that's the biggest issue. How do you get there? How without? do you get there? Well, you're crossing the state highway. Right, yeah. and and so what would be ideal is there at the deli at, at you know Townsend's to go across there because you. Can, <coughs> do the light and, and pedestrians can do the light so how do you get there well if you go around the city streets the, the back way then there's plenty of light poles trees fire extinguishers that's in the way to expand the sidewalk to make it a path a bike path or a walking path well and of course their whole intention is to keep it as much of the trail as you can. Right, right. Because it has to be a trail. Yeah. So then it's like let's go down May, let's go down Ninth Street and just go straight there. Well that's a really good idea, but but then you have all those poles and all those businesses and everything in the way. So that's the that's that was their biggest challenge was to come up with really good financial idea. Well, um, then, then which course, direction we're going to go. Then, of course, this has all started with a grant from the DNR, so uh, they have to approve mm -hmm. whatever you're going to do. And the farther you get away from the quote-unquote rail the trail, trail right. uh, they don't like it. They don't, yeah. don't care for that. So and you ought to have an interesting conversation. Yeah. And, and, and a trail is not a concrete sidewalk, by the way. Right. It's not a sidewalk. It's yeah. a sidewalk is not a trail. Right. And it's minimum of 10 feet. Minimum of, yeah, yeah, minimum of 10 feet wide. We can accept eight, but it's a minimum of 10. Keep remembering that. It's like, okay, okay. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's more than just drawing a line in the dirt saying yeah. here's where we're yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, we spent a lot of time walking that and talking. I mean, we spent a half a day actually walking around. And I was getting very hungry because I missed breakfast. <laughs> you notice I had a meeting, so I had to get yeah. breakfast. <laughs> I got breakfast. <laughs> okay, well, hey, uh, then you'll, be, you'll be in that meeting yes. tomorrow. And then, yeah. Okay. Uh, park Board Chase. Yes, uh, Park Board did meet on the 13th at 6 p.m. Um, First thing on my list I have is, um, I believe it's Ashley Gibbons. She's uh, doing yoga in the park. Um, so she requests- Is that like yoga bear? No, no okay. I believe that's correct. correct. Um, yoga in the park, uh, it's free to the public. And um, so she requested that the park board approve that for her. And um, that will be on Saturdays from eight to 9 a.m. through the summer, uh, actually until September. So if you feel uh, feel like that's something that you want to do that's uh, at your disposal. And that was in um, conflict with the uh, young lady who came in here ago? I think it was the same one, same person. Oh, same group? Yeah, or, same group. Okay. I think there's two okay. ladies there, they're certified yoga instructors, um, and so, yeah, they put that on. Okay. 
was told there was 20 people last Saturday. That's well. Yeah. There you go. I mean, yeah. You did show up they, to report they, on that, didn't you? Uh, they're of course. Doing three, now that <laughs> they're doing three different places in town, oh, so that's really nice. Yeah. Oh, they are. Where are the other two? Well, one is out at the Lily Pad. They're doing the Lily. They're out there on the patio, on the deck of the Lily Pad. Um, and you know where she's talking, right? Right. The yeah. Boutique. Yeah. The new boutique. Mm -hmm. And they're doing the fruitcakes on the oh. patio. Well, okay. Absolutely, so Okay. I can't pull the plug in. <laughs> well, I don't see why you couldn't. Yeah. But, well, you know, you're supposed to have a beer and yoga, and I want you to know that the people last night I just sounds like really a kind of, cocktail. And yeah, yeah, they, they were having fun. Yeah. I think a couple was a little bit uh, on their second okay. beer. Or <laughs> so this, so does it was fun. Make you more flexible, is that? I think it did. I think it did. Yes, yes. Um, it, 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 it was fun. What else, Chase? Um, and then we heard from uh, Hector Fernandez. Um, wanted to discuss Road to Recovery 2 um, that would be held on Saturday, uh, October 1st from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, and this is a free event um, to raise awareness and support for recovery in Fulton County. Uh, the event will have include fun walk around the park, friendly games of softball, cardio drumming, face painting, yoga, and a barbecue. Um, and uh, this is, again, a free event. Uh, anyone that wants to come out is more than welcome. Um, and the uh, park board approved for that to occur. I believe that um, they secured the softball field and large pavilion, pavilion as well uh, to play some games. Uh, that is October 1st, 8 to 2. That's in lieu of what they did last year with the, they had to run or the to town. Yes, yeah, yes. Okay, correct. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's right. Okay. Um, and then to elaborate on the, uh, the pool, um, the kiddie pool is currently closed. Um, that uh, looks like it might need a new liner. Uh, but they also talked about possibly a non-stick um, pad or whatever as well to put in that. Uh, still looking at options there. Yeah, you, you've heard us talk a couple of different times it says evaluations of the pool. We continue to work through things as, as we can, but it needs, needs some things. And thank goodness the with the kitty pool being down, we've got the splash pad going down. It's crazy. Um, also for uh, Mantel Mountain, they were able to uh, <coughs> add in the new water fountain, uh, so it's installed and also included some, uh, replaced some sidewalk that had cracked as well there. Um, had some vandalism at J.C. Park and Fansler Park uh, that has been uh, fixed since then. Uh, appears to continue to tear down uh, the netting at the basketball courts uh, and then damaging some picnic tables, those kind of things. Um, and those have been repaired. Uh, we don't have any cameras at uh, JC or Fansler. Um, I felt like maybe that was something we could maybe look at. I don't know. Have you thought about that? Yeah, we talked about that again. Yeah, it's something we probably are going to have to invest in. I, uh, glad Marvin's here tonight because he and I had discussions on this. But, uh, we continually have vandalism. Uh, we've had sinks torn off of bathroom walls. Uh, now you can't put cameras inside the bathrooms. I would implore anybody watching out there who spends any time in our parks, if you see something and it doesn't look like it's kosher, pick the phone up and call, call the police. Uh, can't be everywhere all the time, and but there's this uh, there's this destructive nature that permeates our society today, and these are all nice things. I mean, we just had the basketball courts done by Leslie Cody. They look really nice if you haven't seen them out there. They really look good. You know, you got to tear a nets down. Uh, just if you see something, just give us a call. We'll, we'll respond. What would you? Absolutely. Oh, no, 
uh, sound good. Um, they've been having some issues uh, at the beach, that bathroom there, with uh, getting sand in the pee traps. Um, so they're possibly looking at maybe adding a shower, outdoor shower there, and at least wash off so they're not doing it inside the bathroom um, to help with that. And then if you talk about the splash pads, that was it for me. Okay. Any questions for Chase? Thank you, sir. Uh, and thank you for your 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 uh, text to me to which one uh, about the campus. Oh, yeah, yeah I appreciate that. No problem. Okay, uh, Rochester BZA and Council on Aging, uh, Councilman Smith. BZA met last week. Uh, there was one thing on the agenda went fairly routine, and uh, Council on Aging met yesterday just beginning to digest the information uh, the biggest part of the meeting that we had a report from uh, transpo kind of uh, a last year look at the activity and how we rate in the areas of the most common 11 counties to fulton county this this isn't just a region it's the most similar to us and uh, Rochester Fulton County doing a very nice job we are uh, in the lowest uh, well we're the third lowest out of the 11 in our cost operating expense per truck which I think is uh, speaks well for us we still are operating not on our full hours. We're open from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. There is a lot of discussion about opening that up both on both ends by an hour. But uh, we average trip per capita is uh, 0.77%, so it's almost it's close to 1% of our capita is writing at some point. Uh, that is uh, third. Uh, Cass County is way ahead of everybody. They average 3.29 trips, but uh, they're open uh, two more hours a day than we are, and uh, their trips are generally shorter. Uh, they take more people to work and pick them up. So uh, we, we rate uh, pretty well as far as the expenses go. We're right now averaging about 100 trips a day. And uh, ridership in 2020 was 12,597 trips. Uh, last year in 2021, it was 15,818 trips. And we are on pace to break 2021 by a pretty good margin uh, so we have had uh, 12 vehicles on the road uh, every day and things are going well uh, as we uh, continue to get back to full speed both at the center and the transpo How, how's the gas situation affected uh, the program it's affected everybody I mean, sure it's just it, the average cost per trip has just gone up right now. We're not talking about raising rates or anything to try to compensate. I was asked at um, one of the events this last week of Teachers Retirement Luncheon, how it's affected the city. And um, as you know, we negotiated the annual contract price. So we're pretty good in December. I'm sure we will be addressing some things then we won't be getting that. Guess what? That'll be on your topic of discussion for July 12th. <laughs> I'm sure it will be, yeah. But. And, and uh, Transpo does uh, appreciate the, the value of a negotiated contract through the county. I see. As well. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, those who don't have a contract right now are in real deep trouble. Any questions for Marty? Thanks, Mark. Okay. Uh, Todd, Solid Waste, and Animal Adoption Center. Both of those groups have opted to meet every other month. Okay. 
I did not meet this month, so I'll have a report next month. Okay. Okay. Very good. Uh, waterboard, John. Well, uh, everything's running fine. And again, if you haven't gone down and looked where the, the house was uh, that they tore down and redid, I just was nosy and took a drive by it today. I'd been down there where they were just finishing up. And uh, so I drove by today. I mean, the grass is coming up. It really, you know, really looks nice. We've got nice, nice space there. And it looks good. It makes our building a little bit more visible and uh, a lot more visible. Other than that, uh, Mayor, you covered the other things that, I, that were of any importance earlier. And uh, so that's about it. Thank you. Uh, Derek's not on vacation? No, believe it or not. Sure no, 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 he's not on vacation. I'm sorry. Yes, he is. He is on vacation. Is he? Oh, he went on. He went on. Yeah. The, on the yeah. He has a 6.30 flight tomorrow morning. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Good for him. Good for him. He's got a lot of vacation. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. He's been around a long time. Yes. Uh, any questions for John? Thanks, John. Uh, Andy, any legal issues we need to be talking about? I don't think so. Okay. ADA concerns, Shada? None that have been brought to my attention. Okay. With that, I would certainly entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved and second. Moved and second. Those in favor, were adjourned. Thank you. Thank you all.